Welcome to Sunday Cooking with Barbara and Kansa. We're cooking. Meets glam. On today's episode, we are making Genyen light soup with goat meat and smoked turkey. Before we begin, make sure you hit the subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, hit the notification bell so you never miss an episode, comment down below, and most importantly, share this video. So first things first, you are going to need one pound of goat meat. You are also going to need about a pound of smoked turkey. And next, what I have here for the Ganyan light soup is I will be using two whole red onions. I love red onions, again, preference. I also will be using four Roma tomatoes. I love Roma tomatoes. I have here called Prekese. Now it is a Ganyan spice that helps make your soups taste great and it adds a little sweet touch. I will also be using two habanero peppers. Again, spice tolerance, you can add more or less. So it's entirely up to you. I also will be using one crayfish Maggie cube. I have here as well um, two ginger pieces, as well as two garlic pieces that I will be using for my soup. I have here a produce, now I am mispronouncing it, called kohun siswa. Um, it is a vegetable Ghanaian produce that helps thicken your soup, so you want to thread with caution with how many pieces you use. And I also will be using two okras as well um, for the end result of the soup. So what I have here is three tablespoons of tomato paste. Now, one thing I want to share is a trick that I've learned along the way is I used to struggle with making my soup a deep, rich color, a darker color. And what I've learned is that the tomato paste is a trick. So tomato paste is what makes your soup a really dark color. So the more tomato paste you use, the darker your soup, the less you use, the lighter color your soup will be. Again here, this is preference. When I'm making my light soup, I always love to implement peanut butter in my soup just because I love the taste that it gives. It also contributes to thickening the soup as well. And one thing I also love about using peanut is that it also helps me dictate when the soup is completed. So when the soup is finally cooked, because what happens is the oils from the peanut butter, as well as your meats rises to the top. And that is your indication of your soup um, being completed. But again, like I said, it's preference. You can choose Choose to use peanut butter or opt out of it as well. So right now we are going to clean our goat meat. So what I'm going to be using is vinegar as the first cleaning process, as well as I love using fresh lemon as well, just to ensure my meat is extra clean. Once I'm done this, I like to pick up the meats, kind of, you know, mix everything within it, pick up pieces and ensure that there's no hair, a little bit of too much information or remove excess fats. And this is the same process that we will be using to clean and wash the smoked turkey as well. So now all of my meats have been thoroughly cleaned and washed. So right now what I am doing with the smoked turkey is I am using a grater to grate the crayfish Maggie cube. I just find this process much easier. So that way it breaks apart the crayfish Maggie cube. And that way I am also spreading out the um, seasonings from the cube all over the smoked turkey as well. What I will be doing next in addition to the crayfish Maggie cube is using adobo all-purpose seasoning salt. After using the seasoning salt, I also like to use salt as well to ensure that my meats are well seasoned and the soup tastes extra delicious. Next, you're going to take one out of your two onions and you're gonna slice it in half, and then you are going to thinly slice the onions into several sections. Now, you need to be very careful at this point because the skin is removed from the onions and you can kind of see the onions slipped out of my hands a bit, but I caught it, um, so just thread with caution. And then you're going to thinly slice the onion into small squares, and this is going to be a part of the steaming of your meat process. Now, over time, these little onion pieces also disintegrate, they vanish, so you you don't see it in your soup as well okay so that's what it looks like and now what I'm doing with the um, other half is I am cutting them into bigger pieces for the blending process so this is the second onion I'm just gonna chop it up into bigger pieces as well too 
So what I am doing next is I'm just um, cutting my ginger pieces into smaller pieces so that way when I place it into the blender with the onions and the other produce, it blends really easily as well as I'm chopping my garlic pieces as well. Again, because it's very smaller than the, it's much, much smaller than the ginger pieces. Thread with caution, again, when you are cutting your produce. I also, the habanero pepper, I will not be cutting into because again, um, the chemicals of the spice, it will just be thrown in the blender with the produce. So I'm gonna put the onions and the rest of the produce aside and introduce here the prakasa. Again, this is a Ganyan spice that I had mentioned earlier that makes your soups taste extra delicious and it has a little sweet touch. Now to ensure that the aromas of this spice permeates through my soup, I like to put incisions in all aspects of my prakasa before I put it into the initial steaming process. And that's what I'm doing now. So the prakasa needs to be broken into pieces so that way the aromas can really permeate the soup. So I always place it into my ganyan clay pot and then I then smash it with a ganyan utensil. Now it's time to add all of your produce into your blender. So what I have here is the red onions, the garlic, the ginger, as well as the habanero peppers. And then what I'm going to use is one cup of water um, to start with the initial blending process. And then I kind of measure it out from there. And then I'm adding an additional cup of water as well too to help with the blending process. So everything has been added into my pot and it's time for the steaming process. And now what I'm going to do is with the peanut butter is I am going to add it into the blender that I use to blend the produce so that way the produce aromas permeates through my peanut butter. And then what I'm going to do is ensure that it blends to become very a liquid a base. I'm gonna then pour it onto my stove top into my pot and make sure I cook the peanut butter down thoroughly. So indicators that the peanut has been cooked thoroughly, it thickens, becomes a darker color, and the oil rises to the top. And make sure you stay on your stove or else it will boil over and create a mess. So now we're checking in on our soup. It has been now 20 minutes and you can see the meats are steaming, the produces are shrinking and the prekasa has darkened as well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm taking out the cooked now Roma tomatoes and I'm going to put it in my blender as you can see here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend the Roma tomatoes so I want to make sure that there isn't any of the tomato flesh or the skin within my soup because I really love clean soup and you'll see how I ensure my soup is very clean throughout the entire process so you just want to make sure that you take out the Roma tomatoes the harbinger peppers as well I'm going to blend it with the tomatoes as well so I'm just ensuring that I've taken out everything oh I think I see another habanero pepper but just double checking to ensure that everything has been taken out for this next blending process so before I blend the tomatoes what I'm going to do now is take out the smoked turkey and the goat meat and what I like to do is I like to roast the meats into the oven I place the oven setting on 500 degrees and I place it on broil setting and what it does is it gives my meats an extra smoky taste and it kind of gives it the dry effect as well so what you will do is ensure that when you are taking out your meat there is no um, broth in it as well just to prevent it from like splattering in the oven and you know that can cause it can essentially cause a fire and that is again a fire hazard so just be very careful when you are taking out your meat and I also take out the prekese and I also like to roast it as well because then it provides it a more smoky um, it gives it a more smoky flavor and the aromas again just will permeate better throughout your soup so just ensure that when you are taking everything out please ensure that there is no broth at all so the tomatoes and the habanero pepper have been blended. So what I'm going to do is take my strainer and strain out the blend. Um, I like to use a strainer just because I like my soup extra clean so that when you're consuming my light soup, you're essentially just drinking broth and meat. Again, preference. Some people will just directly dump the blended contents into their soup. However, I like to use a strainer. And as you can see here with my wooden spoon, I'm stirring constantly so that way I get all of the 
broth juices from the blend and you can see what I refer to as gunk the excess tomato flesh um, skin as well and contents that probably didn't blend properly um, again preference so you could dump everything entirely into your soup but you would see these contents in your soup it has now been 20 minutes and this is what my soup looks like after um, straining out the Roma tomatoes as well as the habanero pepper. You can see that it's cooking. The color is getting a bit darker. Um, there's oil particles coming to the top. And so what I'm doing now is I am placing the cooked peanut butter and I'm straining the peanut butter again, similar to the Roma tomato effect. Sometimes when you leave the peanut butter on the stove, it has like dry skin and flesh that you don't want in your soup. And then I'm just going to stir to ensure that the peanut butter spreads out evenly in my soup as well. The next step now is I am going to go ahead and add in tomato paste. Now, as I mentioned earlier is depending again on preference, if you want your soup to be really dark, then you can add more tomato paste. However, for today's recipe, I am using three tablespoons of tomato paste. Um, it gives it a really good color, a nice deep color. Um, again, if you want it to be really dark, you add more tomato paste. If you like your soups to be a lighter color, then you would add less tomato paste. So you can just see here, I am not putting everything in all at once. You need to do it um, sporadically. And each time that you place a tablespoon of tomato paste, make sure you stir everything so that way um, the tomato paste as well disperses itself and it evenly spreads out all throughout your soup. And after this, you will then have the soup cook for another 20 minutes. Okay, so it has now been 20 minutes and you can just see that my soup is cooking very well. The color has now become very dark. You can also see that the oil particles again are rising to the top. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add back in the roasted goat meat, smoked turkey and the prekese. So you can see there's a difference in color texture as well as it has a dry effect as well too so what i like to say t is to please thread with caution when you are placing the meats and the prekese back into your soup you do not want any of the soup broth to pour or splatter on your skin or onto yourself it has happened to me before it is not a great experience so please please thread with caution if you are comfortable um, pouring everything in all at once absolutely go for it but please have a caution so as you can see here i started off by doing one at a time and then i started putting in a couple more of the meats um all at once so again thread with caution and you can just see the color of the soup it's boiling and i cannot wait to have this soup with my family today quick check-in so it's been 10 minutes you can see the soup is becoming really dark the meats as well are um, sinking very nicely and the prekes as well with the soup and we're going to do a quick stir it has now been 20 minutes and yay the soup has been finally completed so your indicators the oil has risen to the top the soup is now a deep rich dark color everything has synced in nicely as well i'm super excited to eat this with fufu with my family today and there you have it, the final plating of the Genyan light soup inside a Genyan clay pot. I've paired it today with fufu, and you can see the smoked turkey, the goat meat, the habanero peppers, the okra for garnishing, and the prekese. Thank you for watching today's episode on Sunday Cooking with Barbara and Kansa. I really hope that you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making this video and showcasing the step-by-step -step tutorial. Don't forget to look out for the other episode every other Sunday from my house to yours. Have yourself a fantastic day.